When data are fitted with a peak model, the first objective is to reproduce the data with the peak model. And we measure this in terms of a residual standard deviation. And for pulse counted data with a multiple detection system, we would expect a good reproduction to be consistent with a residual standard deviation as shown here. The peak model itself is constructed from a set of components and the number of components represents an input to the peak model. We are making assumptions about the chemical state within this sample and we add peaks on the basis of our understanding of the sample. Another input to the peak model are the line shapes. So we have line shapes here representing sulfur 2P and we have a different line shape representing the gallium 3S. These line shapes are inputs and when we fit the data, the parameters we adjust are the position, the full width half maximum and the area. Now the output that we'd expect from such an optimization is the position of these peaks and the position is important because we wish to assess the binding energy for these photoemission lines and these can give us the chemical state. So if we had sulfate versus sulfide, we would expect a different binding energy. And the other output would be the area. And the area represents the amount of substance. So we can compare gallium here against the sulfur here. Somewhere between input and output would be the full width half maximum. And the reason I say that there's a, a difference between the full width half maximum and the peak position and the peak area is the resolution for the instrument when measuring these data will have an influence just as it does on the line shape on the full width half maximum. The instrument clearly has an influence on the shapes that we see in these data. If we reduce the pass energy then we get better energy resolution and we would expect a sharper peak. And if we increase the pass energy we'd expect a wider peak. So the full width half maximum is determined by the acquisition conditions but is also determined by the photoemission process itself. This sulfur 2p3 halves peak has a full width half maximum that is inherently narrower than this gallium 3s peak. In theory, the position and the area of these component peaks should be independent of the acquisition conditions, but the full width half maximum is not. So it sits somewhere between the line shape that we use to fit these data and the position and the area parameters. So what we will do in this video is we'll look at how the full width half maximum of this gallium 3s peak when we adjust it and then refit these data influence the position of these peaks and the area of these component peaks. The first thing I'll do is add an annotation table that will help to understand this peak model. So if I go to the components property page on the annotation dialog window there are a set of options that I can include or exclude different items. So in this case I'm going to include all of these line shapes, full width half maxima, area, etc. by not ticking the boxes because these boxes indicate that the parameters should be excluded from the table and I need to specifically ask to include constraints. So when I include constraints and then press apply I end up with a table that illustrates the three components we've got gallium and two for sulfur we can see the position, the area and the full width half maximum for each one of these. We can also see the line shapes and we can see that the line shapes are different between the gallium and the sulfur. Both line shapes are identical for the sulfur three halves and one half peak and also the full width half maximum is identical for both of these. The only constraint that I've included is a relationship between the area for the component in B and C and these represent the three halves and the one half and the value that you see here is the ratio of the Schofield cross sections for these two photoemission processes. So nominally this should be B times 0.5 but I've just given a slight twist to this by including the ratio of the Schofield cross sections that were calculated for these photoemission lines. All other constraints are left to adjust within intervals. So there are no other constraints other than this area constraint between these two doublet peaks and we've produced a peak fit that will return the position 
and the area at least between the gallium and the sulfur and I say that because the area constraint is forcing these two peaks to have a given ratio that we have determined theoretically. So now what we would like to do is observe that the forward half maximum as well as the line shape is really very different between the gallium and the sulfur 2p. The objective is to see what happens if we make some adjustments to this forward half maximum of the gallium 3s peak and then observe how the area and the position changes for all of these component peaks as part of optimization. That is to say, I'm going to introduce a fixed constraint for the forward half maximum with a range of different values and then refit the data and observe the outcome. To avoid altering the peak model that I've already got nicely organized, I'm going to take a copy of the VAMAS block to a new file and then I'll make adjustments to the forward half maximum within this file in order to test how this peak model responds to different forward half maxima. There's an option on the quantification parameters dialog window under the components property page that allows us to test peak models. And the way this works is if we select a specific parameter such as this forward half maximum then what I can do is enter a range within the constraint field that will be used as a range over which to scan different forward half maxima which will be fixed at the values and then the whole model will be refitted. So effectively if I were to enter hash here then I would have fixed this forward half maximum constraint and I could press the fit button to obtain a residual standard deviation. However what we're going to do is enter hash 0.3 and what this does is it takes the current value and it introduces constraints that would be 0.3 either side of that value. So when I press return I end up with an interval and this is the interval that will be used as part of the test peak model option and when I press this it'll say do I want to generate a uniqueness plot for the gallium 3s forward half maximum and it's chosen the forward half maximum because I've got the parameter constraints for the forward half maximum highlighted before I press the test peak model button. When I say yes, a new file will be created and the new file will contain a set of VAMAS blocks and each VAMAS block will have a new peak model with a different fixed value of the forward half maximum. And then these data will be fitted with a new peak model and each one will then be used to generate what is referred to as a uniqueness plot. So I'll say yes at this point. Um, when completed, we then have a plot that shows a curve. And this curve, if I change to the alternative axis, which in this case is now chi-square instead of intensity, so this is indicating the chi-square that was obtained for each new fixed value of the forward half maximum. So when fixed at a value between 1.9 and 2, then you can see it's quite flat. So there's very little change in the residual standard deviation across this interval here. However, outside we start to see the residual deteriorating. Now it should be pointed out that every point within this interval would be an acceptable chi-square for fitting of data. In other words, the data reproduction for any of these forward half maxima would be typically accepted as a reasonable fit for the data. So let's now have a look at the spectra themselves. Let me just turn that back to binding energy and counts per second. So this is the original data, and the original data is now fitted with a peak model where the forward half maximum is fixed at different values. And you can see it's fixed because the forward half maximum constraint, as seen here, is identical at start and end. And they're both equal to the forward half maximum. So this means that this gallium 3s peak may vary in area and position but it will not vary in forward half maximum 
and the other two peaks will be allowed to vary apart from the doublet constraint. So we end up with a residual standard deviation and this is what is reported in the uniqueness plot. So we'll just see how the areas are responding to the full width half maximum being fixed at a value and then refitted. So if we observe that point there and then I step down you can see that the area for all of these components is adjusting and the full width half maxima are being stepped so you can see how both the position is changing and also the area and what we should observe is that the position for the sulfur peaks have hardly changed at all the position for the gallium peak changes depending on the full width half maximum and the area changes as the full width half maximum changes and that's not surprising because if you extend the range of the gallium peak it's not surprising that the sulfur would have to reduce in intensity as the width increases and increase in intensity as the width narrows of the gallium peak. If we wish to see a plot of how the area is changing then we can use the custom report directly. So if we select in the right hand side all of these spectra that have been fitted using this peak model with varying full width half maxima and go to the custom report and then select the components so the names and formulae are just pulled out as the component names and then we can say area report. If we now convert the text report which is plotted as a function of the full width half maximum these areas that are generated from the components then we can go to the file menu and create a profile. And this creates a new VAMAS file and we can see how the gallium is clearly increasing while the sulfur is decreasing as a function of the forward half maximum. It's not a large change but it does show that the choice of the forward half maximum makes a difference to the area. Now we can also go back and do the same exercise but this time we'll use rather than the area report we can use the tag report and there's an option that lets us set the selected VAMAS blocks with a different tag so I'm going to select the position field and I'm going to change the components and the regions and when I do so we can now see that the tag field in each one of these is set to position and this means that if I go to the custom report and now select the tag defined report instead of pulling out the area what it will do is it'll pull out the position so this I'm going to change and I'm going to keep the names the same but I'm going to enter a formula now and the formula is simply to convert kinetic energy to binding energy so in each one of these I'm going to make an adjustment and this illustrates the flexibility of the custom report that it doesn't just have to be the names of the components you can do other calculations provided you can describe it as a, an arithmetic expression then you can adjust the report so that the output has a different meaning So there we go I've now added the calculation of the binding energy by subtracting the kinetic energy from the photon energy and if I say tag report it will then look for the information that is specified in the tag which was position. So now I have a report that shows me that this is the gallium 3s position and how it changes and you can see that the sulfur neither of these have significantly altered in position as a consequence of adjusting the full width half maximum of the gallium peak but you can see that there is some kind of movement in the gallium peak itself. So there's a consequence in terms of binding energy and there's a consequence in terms of percent area if we choose a different forward half maximum for our gallium peak. And we also could see from the uniqueness plot that there are a range of values between about 1.9 and 2 where we cannot differentiate on the basis of the, the chi-square which would be the most appropriate forward half maximum to choose for this gallium 3s.